Hey guys, welcome back to Forest Firearms. This is Thomas, and today I have what I would consider by far the most interesting and definitely the most valuable gun in my collection for you guys. I've been waiting a long time to show you this. This is the Mauser Infantry Gewehr Model 7184. Uh, this gun is dated 1887, as you can see right there. This thing is covered in fascinating markings. It was made at Spandau Arsenal. Uh, that's actually upside down, so we'll flip it over for you there. And uh, got the crown over FW here means that this was made for the service of the Emperor of early Imperial Germany, Friedrich Wilhelm. There's a, a many more interesting markings on this gun, and I'll get into some of them for you. But, yeah, here's your model here. It's got really interesting early German Gothic scroll work. It's, it's gorgeous. Everything about this is about as flawless as it could possibly be. And this is the first repeating rifle that Germany ever used, really, especially with a uh, with a actual cartridge bullet. Now these bullets are quite a beast. This is a 11 millimeter Mauser or 43 Mauser. Uh, all these other bullets, the patching or uh, the paper wrap actually goes up the side of the bullet away. This one is a damaged bullet that I will not be shooting. There were two in this batch that I got that I will not be shooting. Uh, for this reason right here, there's a large crack and it's identical on the other, uh, starting right up by the primer and going partially down with a black powder bullet that could essentially turn this into a stick of dynamite that could blow my gun in half, so I don't really plan on doing that, but that's something that if you guys ever buy antique ammo, be very mindful of the condition of the bullets. I did fire this once to make sure that there's nothing mechanically wrong. There's some parts that are a little sticky, but this is a 131 year old gun, so I think we can give it a bit of a pass on that. But right now, I've got it set to single shot only. Now this is fed by a tube magazine. Uh, you can engage the tube magazine when the bolt is closed. Actually, the bolt has to be open initially. You flip your magazine cut off here, close the bolt. I don't know if you could hear that, but now this is open into a tube down below. And when you pull back a little farther, it lifts your bullet up into the gun, into battery there. But I'm gonna start firing a couple of single shots. So let's grab a couple of bullets out of here. This one. Two. I'm just going to leave this one out and grab it when I'm done here. So, this is, let's say, some of the tolerances are a little off because of the age of this gun. Locks like so. This is your safety. It's just a wing safety like your later Mauser guns. And uh, let's go ahead and give this a shot here. All right, clearly shot. Uh, I did not hit the target, but just for safety, I'm going to go ahead and check the barrel. I've got a uh, cleaning rod with me here. And I, I saw clear ejection smoke come out the end of the barrel, but I still want to make sure. And we're good. Okay, so this is not the most accurate gun in the world at this point. Uh, at one point, these were considered to be some of the best guns available. Uh, the French had guns that would rival this in the field. But this is a very well-built gun, uh, very advanced for its time, especially with the, multi the uh, capacity to have multiple shots. The earlier version of this, the Gewehr 71, was single shot only. So the, your major difference is just there's no magazine. You just load one shot, close the bolt, fire, and then you know re redo that process. It's very simple. But let's go ahead and give this another shot here. I'm trying to be pretty gentle with this because this is by far the oldest gun in my collection and I got beyond lucky with this. I would not be able to buy one of these at their average value. I've seen them as high as $3,000. The cheapest one I've ever seen aside from this one was $1,500 and that one was in horrible shape. This thing is 100% matching. Everything down to the screws is serial numbered. It's covered in marvelous little cartouches. There's a couple here. There's a couple more on the bottom of the gun here and here. This one's a little scratched out but you get the idea. Mark indicates that this is the original stock, and it's got some beautiful flame uh, figuring in the wood. I don't know how well you can see that, but maybe the light kind of lets you get an idea. It's a beautiful piece of wood, beautiful piece of machinery, and all matching. And like I said, I've seen these as high as three grand. I got this for five hundred dollars, guys. The store that had it didn't know what it was, and I was I was laughing the whole way out the door. But let's go ahead and give this next shot here. Hit it. 
that creates a lot of smoke. And man, you gotta love the smell of black powder in the morning. That's just, oh, it's intoxicating. And I've waited so long for this. Getting this ammo was a nightmare. Uh, first off, I, I ordered it through Gun Broker, so it took a while for you know my money order to get to him and then him to ship it to me. Expensive to ship, expensive ammo on its own. And I actually got this stuff way cheaper than it usually sells for. I, about the cheapest I've usually seen it, like routinely on the internet, is about $88 for the box prior to shipping. This was about $60 for the box and then like $15 for the shipping, more or less. But if you guys want to get into shooting a gun like this, it is not cheap at all. You're, if you shoot it a lot, you're going to go through the value that you spent on the gun in ammunition alone in a very short period of time. But let's go ahead and uh, show how the magazine works. So again... Uh, keep on forgetting, you've got to open the bolt. you got all that smoke coming out of there. Turn off your magazine cut off, close it, and then pull it back until it stops. Do not force it the rest of the way because it will lock back up. So, there you go. I'm only going to put three in the magazine here. So, this one, the first shot feeds pretty easy. You just stick it down in and it, it kind of just rides itself all the way in. But I have found with this particular gun, and any one of these could be a little different, just all dependent on condition, uh, the bullets can be a little finicky. So I have to line up the nose of the bullet pretty well with the primer to get it to go in at all. And this one's fighting me. There we go. Okay, so that's two. And that's three. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this so well, but you can kind of hear it clunk into place when you... I actually didn't uh, have it up. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, you can hear the bullet slide in. Now you see it's there. Pull, I actually kind of have to let gravity do a little bit of the work for me and let it sit back a bit. And now you are in. Okay. Missed. Again, very clear that it ejected though. Had a lot of smoke come out of the end of the barrel. And hit. Okay, now this does not have much recoil, guys. It uh, it shoves more than it hits. And uh, that's kind of something you can expect with black powder. It's a much lower pressure cartridge. It's not quite like how a muzzleloader would be, where a muzzleloader literally just feels like someone kind of pushed on your shoulder. This does hit, but for the size of the bullet, you would think it would be a lot worse. Because this, like I say, this is an 11 millimeter bullet. If you think of a eight millimeter Mauser, this is considerably larger than that. And uh, it's a, a 380 grain bullet. It is a absolute beefcake of a bullet. And I can actually show you, because of the way these are loaded, uh, the just the size of the bullet itself for contacts. So they don't crimp these on very tightly. So you can kind of just pull it out. So here's the end of my pinky. That is a very large bullet. It, it's just, it's a monster. So I would not want to get hit by this. Um, also, I got lucky with this also, and this I picked up from our friends at the Warfront. This is a original Gewehr 71 bayonet. Uh, the 7184 was made to accept both bayonets so that if you happen to have a gun without bayonet, you could take one of the older bayonets and fix it onto the gun. It mounts to the side of the gun. It's kind of funky. And the overall length of this one mounted, I'm sitting it down by my foot here, is absurd. Now I'm a little over six foot one, and this comes up to my eyebrows with the bayonet mounted. So th this thing is absurd. It's, I mean, about as long as my arm from my elbow. It, it's a monster. I mean, you could kill a horse with this. And the idea was that if you were to encounter, encounter uh, mounted cavalry, you could actually skewer the guy's horse as he charged you with this. And you could easily fight a man who had a sword with one of these. It got a nice hand guard, very long blade for a bayonet. So you could defend yourself in this era of warfare with the, just this gun and its full setup pretty efficiently. And so yeah, I got this from our friends at the Warfront, as I mentioned. There will be a link in the description, as always, for their, uh, their store. And uh, yeah, this is... I haven't really figured out what the unit on this means, because there is a unit marking here. It's very faint because of the amount of corrosion. However, on this gun, there is also a unit marking right here. Now, I figured out what this means, and this is a kind of fascinating side of this gun's history. So this is the Kaiser Franz Regiment 
regular infantry number 40. So the capital R versus italics R is regular infantry. If it was in italics, that is reserve infantry. Uh, I don't know the actual German words for it, but they do start with the same lettering. So Kaiser Franz was the ruler of Austria who helped to defeat Napoleon. And the Prussian military, prior to the existence of the German military in, I believe it was... Uh, 1817 established a couple of units in honor of the other rulers who helped defeat Napoleon and Kaiser Franz of Austria was one of those so the unit that this gun served in is over 200 years old which is really crazy if you think about that and going back to the Prussian side of things uh, the Prussian military kind of stayed as its own even after the unif unification of Germany. All the different principalities had their own armies and Prussia was considered the best. By the time World War I started, all of Imperial Germany had conformed their armies to the Prussian military model. This is from an original Prussian unit from 200 years ago. So it's it, just so much fascinating history behind this gun. Uh, so many interesting markings, many of which I know the meaning of, some of which I'm still learning. For instance, uh, there's you got a mark above the unit mark here that I'm assuming probably a proof marking. Not 100% certain. There's several proof markings on this gun. And like I say, everything down to the screws, the serial number, you got you can probably barely see it on this particular example. There's an 85 right here. That's the end of the serial number for this gun. This thing is, it's a gem. Definitely the the jewel of my collection. This is by far the most fascinating gun that I own, in my opinion. You could go on and on about the lore behind these. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I get to bring this thing out again and show you maybe a versus with Ivan's Martini Henry that you haven't seen yet, and I've been pushing him to get bullets for it. Hopefully soon. But I'll see you next time. This has been Thomas of Forest Firearms.